Hi there folks, hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I want to show you a little feature, a lesser known and rather unusual feature within Autumn Ballista 2 by Reza Studios. And it's quite an advanced little feature, but it's not very well publicized, so you may or may not know about it. And also, I haven't managed to find this properly simulated in any of the other sims that I use. And please, if you have found an example contrary to what I've just said, please let me know in the comments. But so far, I haven't. So, this feature, uh, well, it's... It, only exists uh, officially on one car in Ultima Blister 2, which is the McLaren Senna right here, McLaren's road legal hypercar. Um, and you may know that it exists on this car, but you may not know that it also exists on another car within Ultima Blister 2. And I'm just going to go to Laguna Seca here to show you this in the quickest and simplest and easiest way possible. So. Most sports cars and supercars and hypercars have clever systems and clever things such as limited slip differentials. And I'm not going to go too far into what a limited slip differential or what even a differential is, because if you're watching this video, you're probably a clever sim racing person and you already know. Uh, but just briefly, in a lot of road going cars, you'll have an open differential, which sends power to the two wheels via an axle which is kind of split into two half shafts and what will happen is it will deliver power to both wheels but when one wheel starts losing grip the power will start going to that wheel and that wheel will spin so if you're turning left on a corner maybe you're using a bit too much throttle your inside wheel will start spinning uh, which is something people call one wheel spin and uh, with a limited slip differential which is used in most sports cars that will try and redistribute the power to the wheel that's gripping slowing down the wheel or sending less power to the wheel that is not gripping and giving you better traction um, however mclarens most modern mclarens use an open differential which is very unusual on a sports car or supercar and they do something else they use an open differential but with brake steer so uh, what they do is one that gets rid of the weight of a mechanical dif differential uh, if you don't have the li limited slip differential and he uses the brakes to slow down the wheel it's not got so much grip and apply power to the wheel it has it's rather different in the McLarens, the way that the, the brakes work, but I just haven't seen it working or, or simulated properly in any other sim. It is in Ultima Ballista 2. So I'm going to show you in the simplest way possible how this works. So we're in the McLaren and I usually drive like this with no HUD, but I'm going to bring up the HUD and you'll see my little tire and brakes widget and uh, down here in the uh, near the steering wheel but I'm going to go on to this part of the UI which actually shows you in <laughs> quite big so if you're watching on a small screen hopefully you can see this you can see the tires there they're all in blue because they're cold at the moment and also next to them these circular discs here they're the brake discs now I'm going to try and not use the brakes at all so I'm not going to brake, so my brake temperatures on all four wheels shouldn't really go up at all. However, when I start driving, you're going to see that the back brakes start changing temperature. And that is the electronic braking system or brake steer working on these back wheels. The easiest way I can possibly show you this, I'm just going to stop the car here, is by doing a donut so the inside wheel is going to get less grip and try and spin faster and what's going to happen is the system is going to start applying brakes to the inside wheel so if i do a donut to the right it's going to apply more pressure to the right brake so watch the brake discs the numbers and you'll see the color of the brake disc change on the front rear right so there you go. 
I'm not using any brakes at all. And you can see that my inside right rear brake disc is now up to 270, 300 degrees nearly. There you go. And the outside disc is completely cold. Okay. So that actually shows you that that braking system, this rather clever braking system, is properly simulated in Autumn Ballista 2. But here's another thing. If you're already aware of that, here's one thing you may not know. So I'm going to come out of the, well, come away from the track there and change cars. Now, as I said, most McLarens, road-going McLarens, have this system in place. Um, even the McLaren, or at least the this this car here, the 720S, the road-going version, has an open differential with brake steer. However, the racing version does have a limited slip differential. So that's got a normal or more usual differential. However, the GT4... All these GT4 cars here, if you go into their setups, you will find that they have a preload setting for your diff. So that's how much lock is already built in. And uh, we're going to take the McLaren 570S out here. All of them have a preload setting and you can also change the amount of clutches in your differential as well. You will notice if you go and have a look that the McLaren 570s out of all of the gt4s is the only car if we go into setups here and go to drivetrain you'll see you've got your preload but you've got no clutches at all and that's because this version of the mclaren 7 uh 570s this gt4 version has the same differential as the road car so have a look we've got our we've got our HUD widget up there to show you what the brake, rear brakes are doing and as it's going to do the same thing as the center so the front brakes aren't going to change but I'm going to do a donut and you're going to watch that rear right brake disc light up Oh, just before I try and do a donut, I've got traction control on. That's not going to help me do a donut. Let's take that off. And here we go. Look at that inside rear right brake disc going up over 200 degrees. So you can actually see that working. Similar, similarly, if I do go to the left, you're now going to see the left rear brake disc get nice and hot and that is that electronic braking system trying to slow down that spinning wheel and give it more grip and it's, it's just quite amazing that you can see this being properly simulated in Automobile Blister 2 now like I said before, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've attempted to try this in other sims and I've not got the same results. Um, I'm going to pause the video, or the uh, game just there. Um, iRacing has the McLaren GT4 and I have driven it, but I can't show you that at the moment because um, I've only been able to drive the McLaren. Uh, I don't own them. You have to buy all the cars in iRacing I've only been able to drive that when they have the free uh, when the servers are down they give you the free opportunity to test any car you like and I have noticed in 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 that car it's got a preload on the differential uh, I haven't been able to check whether the brakes are coming on or, or not but I think it's running a normal differential and as far as I know there is possibly two types of GT4 McLaren I could be wrong on this. If you know better, again, please tell me. Uh, one of the older ones which ran a limited slip differential and one that uses the e-braking system. I could be wrong on that. But if these cars, the GT4 of this version of the car is actually supposed to be running 
and ediff this is simulating it properly however if i go in i can't test this out in r factor 2 because r factor 2 has no cars that run this system there is a version of the senna the uh, mclaren senna in the simulation an official version of it in r factor 2 by studio 397 but it's the gtr version which does as far as i know run a limited slip differential in real life so can't test it in that however if i go into i'm just going to drive around whilst we're whilst um, i'm talking to you here if i go into something like uh, a set of course of composition which is your premium or uh, bespoke gt3 simulator this car is in that simulation and out of all of the GT4 cars in that simulation, they all have an adjustable preloaded preload on their diff. Go into the setups, have a look for yourselves. You will find that the McLaren is the only one that you'll go into and you'll get to the diff setting and you can't change it. It is set at zero, suggesting that it has an open diff. So it does suggest that it's the version of the McLaren if there is such a thing that has the open diff and you can't adjust it it's grayed out you cannot adjust it so it's always open and also you can't adjust the brake bias and i'll come to that in a minute every other car within the gt4 range in set of course composition has those settings and they are adjustable let's just stop again so that suggests that it is it is running an open diff with brake steer however when you drive the car the back brake discs if you don't apply the brakes, do nothing. And you may be thinking, well, hang on a minute, in a set of course of composition, you can't see the numbers, you can't see the number of the temperature, you've only got uh, colored bars for the brake discs, which show up in blue when they're cold, green when they're optimum, and then go a little bit orangey red when they're overheating. But if you use uh, an outside application like SimHub, in conjunction with something like Lovely Dashboard, you can then see f the telemetry tells you what the numbers are and those brake bra discs do nothing so that brake steer isn't actually being simulated but also they're they're not allowing you to change the brake bias so is it right that in automobilista 2 that you actually on this car if i come to the setups you've got here an adjustable brake bias. I don't know if you'd want an adjustable brake bias on a car with brake steer because the brake bias will be set up to be further forward so it doesn't interfere with what's going on at the back with the brake disc because obviously they, you might be at risk of overheating. In Assetto Corsa, the earlier, ver well, the uh, the sim that Kunos made before Assetto Corsa Composition, I can't actually, s that's got a lot of McLarens in it. It's got the P1, um, which has definitely got uh, brake steer, and it's got this car as well, the road going version, which has definitely got the brake steer, but it doesn't output brake data te telemetry, so I cannot see what's going on. I don't, but I should assume n if ACC is not simulating it and I should assume the old version AC is not simulating it but anyway um, let's uh, go back out on track again oh before I do uh, just to let you know this preload setting in this car isn't actually preload uh, of course you can control uh, a brake steer e-diff if you like from settings within the car as far as I know so this setting is applying more or less of it uh, depending on the numbers whether you're at zero or 500 which is the parameters that you can go up and down within this range but it doesn't mean preload it's that's just the only thing that the game has that they can call it so but with the EDIF you, you can as I go around the track you can see it working turn off the track to control and ABS again. Now I'm going to use the brakes so you'll see the front temperatures changing as well. But now as I come off the brakes, I'm using just the accelerator and you can see those numbers 
on the back discs changing. And it, it just seems to me that so far, from all the simulators that I've used, and I've used a lot over the years, but I'm just going over current ones. I haven't seen this working in iRacing. I've not seen it working in ACC or AC. Beam MG I haven't got installed at the moment, so I can't try it out in that. But it's definitely working and being properly simulated in Automobile Blister 2. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Please, if you know better than me, please get back to me in the comments. But isn't that quite a wonderful little advanced feature that's happening in Ultra Ballista 2. I just thought I'd point that out. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, you find my videos useful or entertaining, please hit the subscribe button, give us a like. It all helps me keep this channel going. And if you're feeling really generous, I've got a Patreon account as well. Um, and uh, see you out on track sometime. Cheers. All the best. If you want this channel to subscribe, do me a favor and hit subscribe. May seem like a small thing to do, but it enables me to make more videos for you. By hitting that button, you can help us survive. Survive and keep this channel alive. Don't cost nothing, don't take no time. Come on now, keep this channel alive.